everybody, Everyday Angler here. Uh, today I am here with Brian Batka of Southeast Tackle, and he is also the VP of Trout Unlimited Chapter 137 Appalachian. Yep, uh, we actually just met up at the river park and I just got done trying to fish for skipjack and we're here in his little shop and we're gonna do a little highlight of some of the products that he sells and talks about the company a little bit. But first, uh, why don't we get to know you a little better and let the people know a little bit about yourself. I am Brian, I live here in Hickson, Tennessee. I'm originally from California. And I have a small tackle company called Southeast Tackle where we make environmentally conscious plastic baits. We make hard baits. We do custom rods, tailor fit rods, rod repair, reel repair. Pretty much if it's fishing, we do it here. Awesome, yeah. Uh, we obviously talked a little bit before the interview and um, a lot of people are starting to dip their own baits, but he was talking to me about his environmentally conscious. Yeah, so, I have uh, environmentally conscious plastic uh, bait product that I make that is phthalate free, it's BPA free, and it's it, it's a safer alternative for the lake, the fishermen, and the fish itself. Um, it's as it, being part of a uh, environmental group like Trout Unlimited uh, a couple of years ago, I noticed that I was picking up a lot of trash off the side of the lake and then throwing it right back in on a plastic product. So I decided that I wanted to try to change that and start the progress of that. Uh, I still have not found any products out there in the fishing world that are completely environmentally friendly, but I have found products that are environmentally conscious and that's the start to becoming a business that you use to buy influence to make products more environmentally friendly in the future. So, you know, I tell all my manufacturers, if you got a better product out there, you know, I got a bounty on it and, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, we're always looking to make things better. And, and, and better for our fisheries and for our fishermen and fisherwomen. Yeah, it's really important. And uh, obviously I'm new to the fly fishing thing. And when I found out you were the VP of Trout Unlimited, I was really surprised to see your Instagram and stuff with a bunch of bass lures and soft plastics. I was expecting, <laughs> you know, like, pure feathers only fly tying guy you yeah. know so i grew up in northern california and i did uh, a lot of trout fishing there but we also have a lot of great bass fishing and uh my goal in life is just to be a complete angler i like i like all aspects of the sport i'll i'll, I'll throw a dry fly and you know up on some small creeks but i'll also throw an eight wire alabama rig if i need to <laughs> you know uh I, as long as it's safe for the fish, I'm into it. And, uh, you know, there's so many locals out there, you should probably get out there and meet all of them, not just a select group. There you go. And we're gonna highlight a few of his soft plastics. Now, there's a lot going on here. Um, he makes rods, right? You mm -hmm. make rod grips. You talked about some bearings that you put in reels. And we're gonna go step by step, kind of highlighting a few things out of the many things that he does do. All right, so we're gonna talk about some of the soft plastics that Brian uh, makes, yeah. develops. He does a lot of stuff with this. And uh, one of the things that stood out to me is these like giant, how long are these? 11 and a half? 11? Yeah, 11.4. 11.4. They can actually stretch them out to over 16 inches. So uh, definitely something I'm not used to throwing and I've actually never thrown something this big. But I know those biz, big bass guys. Yeah, this is my eight plus pound. When I'm looking for eight plus pound fish, that's pretty much what I'm throwing. Um, I call it the legendary worm because mostly I fish it on the ledge. It's good on the back bay flats. You know, you can Carolina rig it, Texas rig it, but it's really, really effective as a shaky head rig on those ledges in the Tennessee yeah, River system. I just can't see something eating this, but they do. I don't, you know, I don't catch big fish though, so. And of course you've got, uh, these are called the crappie bala. Yeah, from and one sushi end of the color? spectrum to the other. Yeah, that's the sushi. Yeah, and you know, you always need some of these. I've caught, this is about like the only soft plastic I've caught fish on before and these look pretty juicy and he's got a, they are scented you said, right? Yeah, yeah, I actually have my own proprietary uh, scent that's uh, an organic scent product. I also have some enzymes and proteins in it that make the fish hold onto it after they bite it. Plus it allows them to approach it, smell it and decide that it's yeah. something real and live. Um, it does have a little bit of salt in the product and a little bit of salt on the product. The salt's more of a desiccant to kind of hold that scent in the packaging so it cures and really permeates the product itself. Um, but yeah, it's great little bait catches everything in the creek and everything. Yeah, it does. Lake, and so. I like the colors. Most of the time you see them in these bright, which you do have bright colors, but yeah. I like, 
I'm always trying to go as natural Natural as I can. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, these kind of have black on the top, gray, white on the bottom. So that's perfect for imitating minnows and stuff like that. And then we have my first bait that I developed. This is the baller rig. For those of you guys who love to fish the Ned, this is the answer for everything Ned. And you said Um, this is one of the first original baits. Southeast Tackle products that I ever made, yeah. So it is called the Bala. The baller baller rig, rig. It's because it's got balls all over it and then i yeah. put a skirt on it it's got little balls all over it too so yeah it's uh so you said ned rig yeah it's a it's a great ned rig i will texas rig it every once in a while and just let it free fall especially if it skips really well on a three out hook and you can get it all the way back under the dock and with the lightweight hook wire you can actually get to fall real slow Slowly. stay in that strike zone and it gives you a really good opportunity yeah. to get hit you usually do and you, this looks almost like you could drop shot yeah, I, I've good. used it as a drop shot. Um, a buddy of mine swears by wacky rigging it, and he kicks my really? butt all day long with the wacky rig on that thing. <laughs> I never would have thought of doing well, it that way. He's fishing you with your own bait. <laughs> that's the great thing. I yeah. mean, to truly know whether you're successful or not, it's not whether you're successful, but whether you can make other people yeah. successful. So, you know, that's that's the whole goal of my company. It's the mantra of my company is to make environmentally conscious baits that are effective that anybody, no matter what their skill level, can catch fish on. Awesome. So now we're going to look at one of the baits that uh, I asked him, hey, if you could give, you know, somebody one bait and you knew it worked, which one would it be? So we're going to talk about that one here in a little bit. Uh, this is the Technique Worm. Um, this is another it's one of my proprietary designs. Thing. Yeah. I draw my own baits. Uh, I, I take them to an engineering company and then have them carve them out on a CNC machine for me. But my base drawings, I do all of them myself. I don't buy a common mold from other companies like 90% of the small yeah. guys out there do and I, I don't fault them for that. That's just, you know, I, I prefer to have something that's mine. Um, I, I'd rather be an innovator than an imitator. There you go. Uh, but this is the Technique Worm. Uh, you can run it with the skirts on it and these are those little ball skirts. You can also put this on that little Ned bait I showed you there. Um, but you can run it on a Nico weight with or without it. Um, you can Texas rig it. It's got a flat bottom, so you can just screw your screw lock in in case you want to shaky head it. But this Technique Worm, it's called the Technique Worm because it covers a lot of different techniques. So you can take one worm, work eight different techniques in a day without actually changing you know, what you're fishing. You're just changing your technique, which is really helpful when you're trying to eliminate unproductive water or productive water. Yeah. Uh, but a great little bait. Um, it's designed so the segments are actually machined a little bit different than the other guys out there. Uh, this bait will break away on the hook set, so you get really good hook ratio, a hook up ratio. Uh, it also is got all my proprietary sense and all that, so the fish really hold on to it. Yeah. But uh, if you go on my website and you're looking at all these eight to ten pound fish that are on the website, ninety percent of them were caught on that worm right there in that black and blue. Uh, um, Sure, if you've seen my company, you already know it's fire. If not, you're about to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of them this year. This this lake's just been amazing this year. Really? Um, I haven't seen the plus 10s like I have in the previous year, but this year I've seen schools of eight pounders that I've never seen on this lake in the last 20 years that I've lived here. It's just our average size fish has gotten a lot bigger. Hmm. Our monsters are still here, but I don't feel that there's as many of them yeah. in this last year as there were in the previous years. I think our best year was probably about five years ago, honestly. And it, it's definitely been a lot of pressure this year. Yeah, there's a lot of new pressure on the lake, and that's with a big virus, contributor you know, to it. Yeah. You know, everybody's out fishing because there's not really anything else to do yeah, with this exactly. virus. So. People that are usually yeah. not on the water are, so yeah. that's been one tough thing, especially with the jet skiers and all that. But Yeah, I mean, hey, everybody pays their taxes. Everybody's got to yeah. it. We just need to learn to be respectful of each other yeah. and what each other's doing. Yeah, and uh, so there's a few of his soft plastics. He has a lot more. I got some B-roll of, so I'm sure you guys are going to check it out. And they're all available to see and buy on his website. www.south-east-tackle.com And of course, there's going to be a link in the description. And we're going to talk about some flies that he actually ties for Southeast Tackle. And uh, let's get into those right now. All right, so now we're gonna talk about a couple of flies. And one of these is actually not available on the website, but we're gonna show you guys anyway. So this is a one that really caught my eye. So what is this one actually called? The bed thug. That's the bed thug. That's my answer for the power worm for the fly fisherman. So basically, if you ever wanted to tie a worm onto your fly rod, it's probably about the best way to do yeah. it. Um, it's got an air cell tail on it that holds air in it when you cast it. 
and when you go to the bottom it makes that tail stand straight up just like your standard shaky head worm yeah. for regular gear fishermen but now you can do it on the fly and actually a lot of my gear friends throw these on spinning tackle and catch fish on. yeah they're heavy enough yeah um but you know it's got the legs on it uh the other thing is they have a uv proponent to them so they have the ultraviolet yeah i'm trying to get them a good look of it yeah. there you go and uh yeah, it's, it's been a really successful pattern for me. I mean, I've caught a lot of really big fish on it. And uh, like I said, I, I needed a worm for my fly rod. So. Yeah. And it's synthetic. Uh, so. It's synthetic, yeah. So unlike the other worm patterns out there, um, this one doesn't hold the water when you cast it. As soon as you bring it back in the back cast, it sheds the water off by the time you're on the forward haul. You're back to the same weight fly again and you can cast it lift it right out of the water put it right back which is really important when they're doing things like when they're in the jumps in school and you got to get right back on them or you know so you don't have to do a bunch of false casts with this fly and you can really huck it a long distance yep and uh really creative i've seen a few guys try to do the senko thing but i almost like a fly with a little bit of weight so i like the dumbbell eyes on it and all that and um this fly i'm probably going to put a picture of it somewhere down here because it's small yeah it is like a that's one of my signature i guess patterns that i brought from northern california with yeah it. i've been tying for years and it's called the skate caddis and the the main thing about this one is it's on that upturn eye which is no longer available the company that makes mm -hmm. it has discontinued it so the next 2000 of these i make are the last ones ever Dang. um and i have the last of the stock of these hooks that they made um, but this pattern is actually meant to skate on top of the water. You can actually drag it. If you're a rookie, you usually fish it better than the pros do because when you make mistakes, it actually works right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those deals where you drag the fly, once it gets to 45 degrees, then you, you, you skate it across down 90 degrees downstream from you, then you strip it up. Usually by the time you let back off it and let it get a dead drift on the way back, you get the air jaws effect. The trout will come out, do the cartwheel while they're trying to hit it out of the water. Uh, it's, a, it's a real fun way to hook fish. It's real interesting to get yeah, to see them and bite. make them react to a bait in that way, and it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you're going to have to look at the picture. And this one, so this one is not on the website, but it's a Sharps Dungeon tied by Jeff Sharp, Jeff of Sharp. Southeastern Angler. And uh, anybody I mean, that's in the fly fishing in this area knows who Jeff is. Uh, they know who Southeastern Angler is and Dane Law. Um, he's a really talented tire, and when I can get him to make me a couple, I'll take a couple, you know. Yeah, they look it's really, really I mean, they look really good. Rather than just promoting my fly tying, I also like to try to promote other great fly tires in the area. Yeah. So we've got fly fishing here. We've got conventional stuff for bass. We've got crappie jigs. We've got a little bit of everything. Um, he does dabble a little bit into repair, or should I say upgrading reels and rods yeah, and stuff. customizations and repair. Yeah, um, with the bearings and everything. We can talk a little bit about the bearings too, yeah, I guess. Um, at Southeast Tackle, we're Chattanooga's biggest Boca bearing dealer. Um, we keep 90% of fishing applica applicable bearings in stock here at the shop. So, you know, there's no bring it in, I gotta order you some bearings, you know, now you gotta wait a couple weeks. Yeah. I, I have a pretty good turnaround rate. I am booked two weeks out at this point and it changes. Sometimes I'm booked three weeks out, sometimes I can get you in that day. It just depends on, you know, how many customers I have. Uh, at this point, like I said, I'm pretty much booked two, yeah. two and a half weeks out right now, but uh, I do a lot of real repairs, customizations, and maintenance. Yeah, uh, it's uh, definitely, this is also information is available on the website, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, click on the www.south-east-tackle website and you can get on there and click on, click on the, the the real repair maintenance page and it'll give you a little information on you know say you're not from this area how you mail a reel to me how we get it mailed back to you that kind of stuff um, yeah. and some of the products that we do and use i try to do factory work so if i'm working on a shimano i'm going to use shimano grease i'm working on a quantum i'm going to use quantum's product to service okay. that reel and then i do offer some upgrade lubricants too that have specialty items in them like teflons and things like that that allow your reels to perform beyond the factory level awesome All right, we're going to talk about some custom and tailor fit rods. Fit, I said it right? Yeah. Okay. Right. That uh, Brian here makes uh, fly rods, spinning rods, bait casting rods. And offshore rods. And offshore rods. And they all look really cool. This one stands out to me just because this is like a big boy fly rod right here. Yeah, that's my 10 weight. That's uh, pretty much what I'll use from anything from tarpon to really big bass on the lake here. If anybody saw the 14 pounder I caught last year on the fly, this is the rod that pulled that fish in. 
And I'll get you guys some better video of this. My camera doesn't want to focus on it. Right. But we, these grips, you know, they're, they look really good. Yeah, we custom turn all of our grips. They're tailor fit and shaped to your hands. And that's where we get the tailor fit name for our rods. Um, we do a little bit beyond a custom rod with a custom sticker. We actually fit your rod to you. These rods are actually, when they're all one piece, are actually balanced where you put your hand to the reel they sit on. So wow. there's no weight at the tip of the rod, which gives it the ultimate sensitivity because it doesn't take any mass to pull it because there's no weight at the tip. You feel everything. But all my rods are balanced to the equipment they're using. That Not only they tailor fit to you, but they're tailor fit to the reel that you're going to put on them. So all that goes into mind before you even start building it, huh? Yeah. It, I set things up with bob weights. I, I move weight around on things. Yeah. Um, so I this set is my own a... guide spacings. So we, this is still a blank. Yeah, or... that, this one's halfway through the process. So basically I've constructed the handle. I've gotten the balance of approximately where I want it for the application that it's going to be fishing. But these grips, I turn them on my lathe on a mandrel. Wow. And they start off as just two blocks of foam like that. I draw out the design. Once I've drawn out the design and I have an approval from the customer, then I go ahead and cut it. Yeah, this is like really quality stuff too. Like, uh, I'm gonna try to take really good videos of it, but it looks really good. Like I said, sp you said spinning offshore, fly rods, yes. bait casting rods. Surf rods, jetty rods. Yeah. Basically, if it's a rod, I've built it. Spay rods, single hand rods. Euro nymphing rods. <laughs> yeah, this thing is. Um, I build all from all different blanks, uh, anywhere from mud hole. This one here is a sage. Um, but you know, whatever floats your boat is what we can do for you. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and got to know Brian a little better and what Southeast Tackle is all about. Of course, there's a link in the description to his website. Uh, there's a lot more to Southeast Tackle than we've talked about, but we've tried to keep the video a little informative and short. If you really want to dive deeper, definitely check out his website. www.south-east-tackle.com And uh, thank you very much, Brian. Uh, you, we're actually about to go fish. Yeah, let's go pull some lips. So I'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Everyday Angler. Thank you.